Good afternoon. This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News coming to you today with another in our series of videos pertaining to radiology. I've practiced medicine for 32 years now and um, I'm delighted with the profession because there's always something new. In fact, today I saw two things for the first time. One of them is the subject of this uh, particular video. Uh, this is a patient who is 70 years of age today. This MRI was obtained 20 years ago when he was 50. Um, and he, pro he has acromegaly. He probably had acromegaly from the time he was a teenager and it wasn't diagnosed until he was 50 years of age. He uh, had all the classic symptoms and signs and features. He was five feet eight tall. His parents were five feet tall, so clearly he exceeded his genetic potential. And uh, that fact plus the uh, symptoms and signs lead me to believe that he probably had the disease for 35 years before he was diagnosed. Unfortunately, he had developed heart failure uh, prior to being diagnosed, and he ultimately required a cardiac transplant because of the uh, well-known acromegalic cardiomyopathy. Um, he underwent surgery uh, at age 50 uh, for pituitary disease. And I wanna show you his MRI. A couple of things here. First thing you see is this area here. These are the intranasal passages and they're very thick and spongy. And this is typical in patients with acromegaly. The black is air. Uh, so there's really no place for air to move through his nose. And this is one of the reasons patients with acromegaly have sleep apnea and a stuffy nose. Uh, this is a coronal section MRI, and I'm going to, to scan backwards through the pituitary gland and, um, or towards the pituitary gland, and we'll see what we find. I'm starting to see a mass here. This is the, the sphenoid sinus. It's the front of the sphenoid, si sphenoid sinus. Starting to see this mass lesion here. Continue to progress forward. That gets larger because we're getting through a bigger part of it. Here's a carotid siphon, which I always suggest that you look for to find the cella. More into the cella here, carotid siphon on this side and on this side, and this hypo-enhancing area is tumor. This looks like normal pituitary with contrast enhancement. Here's the back of the tumor up against the carotid artery. Look at this, here's a second tumor on this other side much smaller, but it's there and it's discrete. You can see normal pituitary separating these two lesions. So these uh, double adenomas or multiple adenomas are seen in about 2% of patients with pituitary tumors. Uh, I've seen patients who have acromegaly and Cushing's, hyperprolactinemia and Cushing's. Um, I've seen patients with a non-functioning tumor and a hormone-secreting tumor, a non-functioning tumor, and a silent ACTH-secreting tumor, for example. Uh, so the, the surgeon, who was Charlie Wilson at the time, uh, took this gentleman to surgery, and he discovered, in fact, that this was indeed two discrete pituitary adenomas, and he removed them both. And the pathologist said that uh, the larger one was a tumor that secreted growth hormone and prolactin, and the smaller one was a tumor that secreted growth hormone. So this is the first time in my career I've seen a patient who had double adenomas where both tumors were secreting the same hormone. So his acromegaly obviously was raging at the time because not only did he have one tumor, he had two. And those of you with one tumor know how bad it must be to have the one. Imagine what it's like to have two. And no surprise, this gentleman ended up in heart failure and required a heart transplant to survive. Fortunately, he's doing well now, many, many years after that heart transplant. And he has the chronic bony changes of acromegaly. Uh, at present, uh, we're seeing him, he has uh, what appears to be growth hormone deficiency because of his post-operative status and uh, having been rendered disease-free. Uh, but he feels great, he's happy to be alive, he's reasonably healthy with medical assistance, obviously. Uh, but it's a, it's a very curious case of two well-demonstrated pituitary adenomas in a patient with acromegaly and 
rarely both tumors secrete growth hormone. I told you I saw two things for the first time. The other was another patient with acromegaly uh, that uh, had the highest growth hormone level I've ever seen, measuring 189. So um, we see new things every day. It's one of the things that keeps medicine uh, interesting, but uh, even more interesting are the patients and um, uh, the things that they bring and the things that they teach us. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, video uh, MRI review. Uh, as usual, please send us uh, any questions and comments that you may have. Have a good day.